What is going on everyone? My name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 7 of the New Beginner Java Game Program Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to load and display images onto the screen, so let's get to it. Now, I deleted our test rectangle code that we had in the last class, that way if we run our game, we just get a blank screen that clears itself every time the render method is called. Alright, let's get on to loading images. Before we can load an image, we have to have some space on our computer where we can save all of our images too. So we're going to create a new folder inside of our project. Right click on your project and go up to new folder. We are going to name this folder res, R-E-S. This stands for resources. This folder is going to hold all of the textures or images, sounds, and music for our game. Now right click on the res folder that you just created and go up to new folder again. We're going to create a folder inside of the resources folder. We're going to name this folder textures. This textures folder is going to be where we save all of our images to. So we have our resources folder and inside of that we have our textures folder. Now let's, let's actually create an image for us to use. Open up any image editing program you'd like, make some silly image and go up to file save as. Navigate to your project folder. So double click on your project, then go into the resources folder we just created and then the textures folder inside of that. This is where we're going to save our image. Now you can name your image whatever you'd like. I'm naming mine test.png, but it's very important that you note the full name of your image. Mine is .png at the end. Yours could be something different, just make sure you know what it is. So mine's called test.png, go ahead and save that to your textures folder and we should be done. Now if you are using Eclipse, you're going to have to press the F5 button on your keyboard in order to actually see the image that you just saved. Here we go. So inside of our project we have our resources folder, inside of that we have our textures folder, and inside of that we have the image that I just saved. But before we can actually load in images, here's the thing. In order to access images from directly within our game itself, from anywhere, we're going to have to add the resources folder to our Java build path. So click on your project up here, then go up to the project tab and select properties. Go to the Java build path option on the left here, then go under the Libraries tab and select Add Class Folder. Navigate to your folder here, or to your project and then select the Resources folder only. This is going to add the Resources folder to the Java build path. As you can see, the little icon changed a little bit. Now, what this does is it allows us to access anything from within the Resources folder from directly within our game. Technically, you do not have to do it this way, but if you don't do it this way, you can't use the image loading code that I am going to use in this tutorial. Alright, all we've done here is create a couple of folders and save an image inside of it. Let's actually load that image into Java. We're going to create a class to do that. So right click on your main package and go up to new class. And we are going to name this class image loader. This is going to load in images for us. And I'm going to put it in the .gfx package of our game. GFX stands for graphics. Click finish and now we have our image loader class. This image loader class is going to do simply one thing, load images for us. Now how does Java store images? Well Java stores images in a buffered image object. You're going to see buffered image a lot. This is Java's way of saying this is an image. So images will be stored in a buffered image object. That's just a good thing to know. Now let's make the method that actually loads in our images. It's going to be public of course and it's going to be static so we can access it from anywhere pretty much. And it's going to return a buffered image, it's going to return an object of our loaded image. And I'm going to name this method load image. And it's going to take in a string variable called path as its parameter. Make sure you go ahead and import buffered image. Now this path parameter is going to be the location of your image. So what folder it's in and the name of it. Let's actually return our buffered image or load in the image and return it as part of this function. So we're going to return image io dot read and then inside of this we're going to have to pass in a parameter. We're going to do image loader dot class dot get resource and then pass in the path variable as a parameter to that. So it should look like this. This is how we load in an image in Java. It's as simple as that. So this String path variable is our, the name of our image and where it's located, and this right here is just going to load that in for us. Now we have a huge error here, and that's because we're going to have to surround that in a try and catch statement. This is just in case any errors happen. Now at the end of our catch statement here, we're going to want to do system.exit with a code of 1. 
because if we don't load our image into the game, we don't want to run our game, or it's not going to be, or it's going to be useless. So this is going to try and load in an image for us. If all else fails, we should be able to exit, but Java is going to make us return null at the bottom. That way, it gets rid of all of the errors. All right, that's a fair amount of stuff. This line right here is the only important line that you need to know. This returns the buffered image object of our loaded image. Now let's actually try this out and see if it works and get an image displayed on the screen. Go into our game class and we're going to create some temporary code. All the code that we're going to create here is going to be temporary. Make a private buffered image object and we're just going to call this test image. And remember to import buffered image and all that stuff. And then here in our init method, we're going to set test, whoop, test image equal to our image loader class dot load image, and then we're going to have to pass in the path. Now, since we already linked our rest folder or our resources folder to the Java pilled path, all we have to do is put a slash to access it. Then our image inside is inside of our textures folder, so we're going to have to access the textures folder, put another slash, and then put the name of your image test dot png in my case. Do not forget the extension of your image. So this will set our test image buffered image right up here equal to loading in our test dot png image. Let's actually render this. In our render loop, how in the world do we go about rendering images or drawing images? Well, the graphics object holds all of the magical power to do that. So we're going to do g dot draw image. Now, it takes at minimum four parameters. It takes the image to be drawn, so our test image, which is our buffered image. It takes an x and y coordinate to draw it at, so I'm going to draw mine at, say, 20, 20. And then it takes a null as its last parameter. This right here is called the image observer. We are not going to be using image observers in this tutorial series. I'm not even going to try and explain it. So we're just going to put in null as the last parameter. It's going to work perfectly fine, of course. All right, hopefully this loads in our images and displays it to the screen. Click the run button and look at that. We have my big image that says hi and a couple of really bad smiley faces. It's on the screen. It's working. This is sweet. I want you guys to go out, try loading in a few more than one images. Draw them to the screen. Make sure you understand the coordinate system even more. This is sweet. We have our image displayed to the screen. Now, I'm actually going to delete all of our test code that we just made. So I'm going to delete this test image object. That way, in the next tutorial, we can start with whatever we're going to be doing then. Thanks for watching, everyone. We learned how to get images displayed on the screen. Go ahead, experiment with that. I really appreciate all you guys watching these videos. I'll see you next time.